you only get one chance to make a first impression. Go big or go home. And that's what was on my mind when I started this build for Mr. Miola. I knew the most important part of the build was going to be the entrances. Ha! Boom, baby! And this video is going to be all about how I made those entrances as memorable and striking as possible. Make sure to stick around until the end when I'll give a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating these Grecian columns with or without mods on PC or on console. You too can create massive columns like these and I'll walk you through it one step at a time. So let's back up a bit. Hi! I'm Songbird. Welcome to my channel, Songbird Gaming, where I make videos and live streams about ARC building tutorials and modded gameplay. A few weeks ago, I got a crazy opportunity. Even though I had a little tiny channel with only around 450 some subscribers, I had been chatting with YouTuber Mr. Miola on Twitter, and he has over a million subscribers. He was willing to give me a shot at letting me collaborate with him by building him a base. I had been building in creative mode for less than a year and so far my only large castle build was when I built Hogwarts for the architects and it took well over a month of near daily work with quite a few others helping as well. I only had about two weeks to do this build by myself. When I first got started, I did not have an extremely clear picture in my head of what the entrance needed to look like, but I knew that the entrance was going to be the most important part of the build. Because after all, first impressions are lasting impressions. I had a few ideas, so I did some research to help me refine those ideas. I looked at a lot of reference images. This is a process I'm familiar with as an artist in other mediums, such as painting. I thought through the things that were inspiring me in this build, and then looked up as many different pictures of them as I could find on Google Images to help clarify and hone my mental picture of what I was trying to create. The name of the ARC map that Mr. Miola was doing this series on is Olympus. It has a Greco-Roman mythology theme to it. Because of this, I wanted to base the build on some aspects of classical Greco-Roman architecture. I didn't want it to just look like a typical European-inspired castle. And one of the main things that would set it apart is that I wanted it to have massive Grecian-style columns and also a lot of Roman-style arches. I looked up reference images of Greek and Roman temples. In this process of scanning hundreds of different images, I wasn't looking for a specific build to copy. I was looking for the things that would make someone look at a structure and go, that's a Greek temple. And the things I was seeing over and over were symmetry, definitely a lot of symmetry. Also, round buildings, domes, definitely a lot of arches on the Roman temples especially, and yes, columns. I even looked up the differences between the three different types of Greek columns, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. So these were all features I wanted to include without copying any specific building exactly. I also looked up images from fantasy inspired by Greek and Roman mythology. Finally, I found this image. So this became my main reference image for the build, even though I did not copy it exactly by any stretch. But I liked the way this temple is integrated into the terrain it's built upon. I like all of the different sizes of columns, all the different round buildings in different sizes, the fact that individual buildings are symmetrical, but the structure as a whole is visually balanced, but not perfectly symmetrical. I liked that there are buildings on different levels of the mountain. I liked that it looks like it was carved directly from the mountain. It really fits the terrain. I later learned that this image is from the video game God of War 3. So that was my starting point for creating this build. One of the main differences I had in mind though was I needed a lot more open space. Because I was building this specifically for Mr. Miola for this specific playthrough where he was playing Primal Fear with this random sizes mod added and he was taming all of these huge creatures. Let's make it bigger! Primal Fear creatures are often bigger than regular art creatures anyway. 
and many of these were double or more the size of regular primal fear creatures. He doesn't really like to store away his creatures in soul orbs or cryopods. He likes to leave them out on display, where he can see them and enjoy them and showcase them in his videos. I wasn't going to try to get him to change the way he plays the game, so I took it as a building challenge to try to build a structure that would work for him in the specific way that he likes to play Ark. So, I had to figure out a way of making huge, round Grecian columns in Ark. There had been a few ways I've seen of making round columns, such as using stacked water tanks, etc., but that was still not quite the look I was going for. I figured there had to be a way to combine square pillars and mesh them together in a way that would make an attractive-looking round column with a square base I did something similar in the Great Hall in my Hogwarts build. So I tried to remember what I did there and started messing around with fence foundations and pillars and different pieces as well from castles, keeps, and fortresses just to see what I could make. This took a lot of experimentation and I'm not even showing you all of the experimentation here because in all I probably spent four or five hours just on messing around with these pieces and figuring out the pillars. So I'm showing some of the different attempts and methods that I figured out, but not all of them. So I experimented with a lot of different pieces from the different mods as well as from vanilla. Because, of course, S Plus has some slightly different snap points from Vanilla, and CKFR has some differently shaped pieces that I wanted to try. But I discovered that I had to use Vanilla Fence Foundations because the CKFR and the S Plus ones didn't snap the same to the edges of a foundation. You can free place them on top of foundations, which is useful in other situations, but not what I was looking for here. And this was kind of a eureka moment here because this was when I figured out that if I used a hatch frame and trapdoor as the base for the fence foundations that I could create this hashtag type design which ended up becoming key to creating the type of column that I wanted to create. So by putting an X design with a hashtag over it, that was the shape that I ended up discovering. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. It took me a while to figure out the rest of the pieces to create the base and to create the shape of the pillar that I wanted. So I was still fiddling with it for quite a while after this. This was another Eureka moment because this is when I discovered that the hashtag shape made it possible for me to snap pillars in these particular spots that I had not previously been able to snap them. And those combined with the snap points made by the X design created a circle of eight pillars tightly meshed together. So I was still playing around with different options for the base of the pillar, still trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to do this and decided to test out how, how that would look when it was a little taller, get a better look at the column texture. And ooh, I really did like that. Uh, that was another attempt over there, a different one, but I decided it was too massive for what I was trying to do. It would have been out of proportion with the rest of the entry. So I moved on to messing around with trying to create a base that I like. Some of the um, snapping ceilings to the center of some of the pillars made an interesting design. I was trying to figure out how to frame it in. Sometimes it's valuable to just mess around, even if you don't think you're gonna like the result, just, just to see, you know, just to throw things against the wall until you find something that sticks, like my dad used to say. Or as other people say, you know, F around and find out. <laughs> That's kind of how I tend to learn stuff. I did like the look of that base overall. So that was one option. And sometimes the snap points on the tall S plus pillars can be a little bit wonky. So I decided to use the short pillars and then fill in with the taller ones. 
because I was trying to figure out how to get them all to be close to, as possible to the same height because these snap points down at the bottom were slightly different heights and so that made it difficult to get the pillars the same height which would be important when I came to doing the top of the column the, with the, I don't know what you call it, the crown of the column. I do like the look of that. But of course that's without the round column look, but that was another option that I did like and might use in a, another future build. Kind of dress up the plinth or base of the pillars, so mess around with those for a little while. But I ended up deciding not to make it too complicated because I didn't want it to be distracting. You know, they I wanted them to enhance the build as a whole and not draw undue attention to to themselves by having too much detail. I know it may amaze people to think that I believe there is even such a thing as too much detail, but you don't want it to look cluttered. So there comes a time when doing a little bit of editing and removing unnecessary bits and bobs can definitely be a good idea. So got rid of the gigantic, ginormous column. And this was one kind of challenging thing I, I learned about having the foundation support turned off on the server, which is an S plus setting that Mr. Miola had enabled on this server. I've never built with it before. For a lot of things, it was really handy because when using S plus pieces, at least, I didn't have to worry about them needing foundation support, but it also meant that when removing a structure that I didn't want, I had to actually pick up each piece because I couldn't just remove the bottom and then let the rest of it collapse. And decided to play with some other options for bases. So I was playing around with a, an option for a crown and decided to try using an S plus dynamic pillar, which those snap down from ceilings the best. So I had to go up first with the thin CKF pillar in the middle to support the ceiling and, and make sure that it was snapped to the right spot and then went down with the uh, S plus dynamic pillar and I made it the maximum width and the maximum height. At, you can see it turned the stone texture when it intersected with the ground to sh show that it had foundation support. And this did make a really interesting looking pillar. Who knows, might use it sometime for another build, but decided not to use it here. I did try painting the pillars white, but unfortunately the CKFR pieces took paint much better than the S plus or vanilla pieces did. And you could barely see the paint at all on the S plus stone. And so I had to abandon the idea because it would have looked odd to have the gray pillars and white bases. So these are two of the pillar options side by side. I wanted to compare the different base types, decide which I wanted to end up doing. I knew that I wanted the rounded pillar, but I was messing around. I kind of liked the base on the other one better. So I was trying different options for dressing up the base and I actually really liked this version with triangle roofs just to give a, a bit of a more interesting angle to the base there. And I even liked how it clipped together at the corners, just made it look like a decorative detail and then added more CKFR accent pieces, etc., to dress up the base. All of this was just to test out, and so I decided to move over to somewhere else and try to experiment with making a similar design in vanilla, just to see if I could, and just to get kind of the basics figured out. Because even though I prefer building with mods, I know not everyone has access to them, so I always have kind of in the back of my mind, you know, is this something that could be done with vanilla? Is it not? How could something similar be done in vanilla? And so I was playing around here and I realized that I couldn't make that corner to corner design, the X design with the fence foundations with the, a hatch frame. But then even after I removed the hatch frame, it just was not giving me that snap point, which was kind of bizarre because it's a snap point that exists in vanilla. It was just snapping to this middle point, which I decided to play with and just see how it would look. So this is 
almost like when you're when creating a 24-sided circle except of course there's only eight of them here and there is a snap point in the center of a vanilla fence foundation and so I'm using that center snap point so yeah you can consider this kind of a bonus design I was using sloped walls to see if I could just kind of add an interesting detail to the base I was trying to create. So I needed to have some kind of a base that would cover up or integrate the fence foundation somehow since of course with this particular design half of them was going to be sticking out and I couldn't remove them or the pillars would break. This one was not cooperating. I figured it might be because the pillar wasn't all the way down at the bottom. It might not have foundation support. There, now once I added foundation support, they snapped. Okay, so this creates basically an octagonal base instead of a square base, which this isn't what I had set out to do, but I just kept playing with it and when it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do I just kept playing around with the wrong snaps and this is just kind of what I came up with. And of course not having decorative accents from CKFR I was looking for other ways to make the base look more ornate. So snapping fence foundations to the edge just gave it kind of an added detail. And also of course if I had used stone foundations, fence foundations, for the original circle part of it, then those would blend in with the ones being used as decorative accents and make the whole thing look intentional, which half of the decorative designs I come up with are covering something janky or something like that because my usual rule of thumb is if something's janky, I try to fix it. If I can't fix it, then I go the complete opposite way and I try to showcase it, try to make it look intentional, make it look like a decorative detail. So yeah, when my builds look really detailed, sometimes that's why. Sometimes it's because I was finding creative ways to cover jankiness, because it's art. It's going to be a little janky sometimes, that's just kind of the way it is. And honestly, I think that embracing some of that imperfection also makes a build look more realistic. It makes it look less sterile because nothing in real life is ever perfect. In nature or even man-made things, if it's too perfect, it makes it look artificial, in my opinion. And so a little bit of imperfection that you are able to make look intentional, balanced, so that it still looks pleasant can actually be pretty cool. It's kind of like the Japanese concept of wabi-sabi, which I am not Japanese and will not pretend to know very much about Japanese culture, but I have heard that this concept of wabi-sabi is that of embracing imperfection. And that's the art form where they would take broken pottery and repair the cracks with gold. And those repaired golden cracks would become a feature and make the piece look even better than when it was first made and it was still relatively perfect. So I really liked that base and crown design. But hang on until the end and I did try other variants of the column design in vanilla as well. I actually discovered multiple different ways of doing those in vanilla. So if this video has been helpful to you in any way, I would really appreciate it if you would give that like button a quick little tap. It makes a big difference and helps the video spread to more people. Thank you so much. So I decided I wanted columns at the land side entrance as well as at the fly-in uh, uh, entrance with the teleport platform. So I was trying to use foundations to measure out a distance in front of the actual entrance to make sure that the pillars would be evenly spaced and line up properly. And then got a found tech foundation with a hatch frame and trapdoor on it so that I could make this pattern that enabled me to make the round columns. So 
So these are the S plus large pillars, which are the height of five vanilla walls, which using those helps to speed up making a tall pillar for sure, and also adds less structures. So that's handy. Add those triangle roofs. I really like the way this base looked. Sometimes if things are snapping to the wrong thing, it's easier to pick up the thing they're snapping to than to fight the snap points. All right, then put it back. Huh. Of course, there's that little gap because it's not exactly the right, the same height. The pillars, the pillars are not the same height as some of the stacked foundations, making up the wall on the other side. So once again, there's some jankiness to cover and make it look like a decorative detail. So I was playing around with different options of how to deal with the jank there. Tried the triangle roofs there, tried making another, uh, making a fancier crown here at the top to cover it. And I liked that design so much that I decided to go with that as the height of the floor above rather than previous height I had been using. And I just love this feature of S Plus that you can change the appearance of pieces. So all of those pieces still have the strength of tech. And if you go up and look at them, uh, the label on them will still say tech, but it looks like stone. So yeah, I decided to start over with that and make it the same height as my column because I just really liked the way the crown on that column looked. It's nice having multiple different options because that's one thing I liked about that reference image was that there were different types of columns, different sizes at different parts of the building. So here I'm trying to figure out the spacing for the columns. That's another thing I like uh, using the S plus ceilings or foundations for since you the, uh, the function where you can change the appearance because it helps, it makes it a lot easier to mark certain certain foundations without having to paint them. I can just toggle them to a different variant temporarily. So I was trying to plan how wide I would want the entrance to be, and there's the center. I counted from either side and found that the what I had built so far was an odd number of foundations across, which is what I wanted because it would make it easier to, um, to do what I was planning on doing with this platform in front of it because I wanted to make it kind of like a partial circle and it would be easier to have it attached by one central foundation rather than having to have it two, two foundations for it to, to attach to, if that makes any sense. And this is one of the ways in which it was handy having the foundation support requirement turned off in the S plus INI options is because of course, normally I would have had to have pillars running down from this, but long before this, before I got that far away from the foundations. But with this setting, I could just play around with it and then add some decorative support later on if I didn't want it to look like it was floating. It's starting to take a shape. This stage of building always has a lot of flying around either in GCM or with a Sino or even with an RG or Pteranodon. But I need to back up and take a look at it to kind of play around with different options in my mind's eye. Like imagine what certain things might look like and that try to picture different dinos, different creatures and how, whether this would be large enough or not. And the fact that you can now toggle the tech ceilings to look like greenhouse is a fairly new feature of S Plus since the last update. Previously, greenhouse wasn't one of the options for uh, changing the appearance of the, the tech ceiling. And I was so stoked that it is now because I love the look of the vanilla greenhouse glass and the slight green tint that it has, but I don't, <laughs> it's so fragile. It's, it's really difficult to use in some situations without risking breaking it or damaging it and having to constantly be repairing it. Let's get some of those Roman looking arches in as railings. Love those CKFR 
half wall arches, but I didn't want it to be just CKFR. I didn't want it to look just, just Greco-Roman. I wanted to mix in some tech as well, because that's kind of the aesthetic that Olympus mod map has going on, is the kind of the mixture of tech and Greco-Roman stuff, but as if, you know, you're seeing remnants of the technology of the gods or something, I guess. Some kind of sci-fi storyline. So I wanted to include some little accents here and there of visible tech railings, some tech ceilings here and there that were not toggled to look like stone, things like that. I wanted this to have some kind of a look like it was being supported. I didn't want it to look like it was floating but I was just trying to figure out where I wanted to go with the decorative detailing. So just trying a bunch of things. And then those are the wall accents, the keep wall accents. Love those as a detail that you can add just about everywhere because it snaps to the top of walls or railings or between walls. It'll also snap to the edges of foundations. Really, really handy piece. So I forgot to record while I was making these stairs here, but they're pretty simple. As you can see, just going between the two levels here, they're five foundations wide and I stacked some foundations in there so that I could have these nice little pedestals to put taxidermies on. And then I spaced out spots for columns on either side and made my little hashtag and X symbol there to be able to put my round columns there. Just was working on getting the spacing right on these guys. So at first I was adding these uh, S plus railings as part of the design because those had been part of the design when I figured out the round column but I later figured out that I didn't actually need those and so I started eliminating them from the design. So I did make one column all the way up to the crown so that I could gauge the approximate height I wanted and use it as an example for the rest of the columns. So you see with doing the base this way, you, I didn't need those, uh, I didn't need those railings in there. Just using the CKFR half walls and then snapping the S plus pillars on top. These are the S plus medium pillars, which are three walls high. And the columns ended up being a total of three, six, nine, ten, eleven 11 walls high. And I connected them with ceilings just to make sure they were going to be the same height exactly. And then added in the rest of the pieces for the design. I eventually abandoned the use of the arch pieces and instead was focusing on using the triangle ceilings like I had figured out how to do, or the triangle roofs. I kind of liked having the shorter pillars at the corners here though. So I was trying out this combination for the base. And then I noticed they were snapping in this pattern and I kind of liked the way that looked. It had a really cool and ornate look that I liked. And I was curious if the same design would work up at the top. Triangle roofs are famously annoying to deal with in ARC and S plus ones are not much better than vanilla ones in that regard. And CKFR, unfortunately, doesn't really have a triangle roof that looks good upside down. You can place them upside down, but instead of looking the same on both sides, like the vanilla and S plus ones do, one side has very obvious roof shingles and the other side is very obviously the underside of the roof shingles. So they don't really work in the same way. So I went back and I added in the ceilings underneath all of those so that I could fill out the rest of the base with that design. Got rid of the shorter pillars, decided to do the same pattern top and bottom, and I was fighting snap points pretty much all day and all night, a while, to the point where I was pretty much seeing snap points in my dreams. And even my usual trick of holding it there for a few seconds before clicking wasn't working all the time, but finally it worked. Come on now, there you go, oh, almost. I've noticed that as a build gets bigger and thus laggier, it can really help to hold the piece in one place. 
for several seconds before clicking to give all the lag kind of a chance to catch up so that the game actually realizes where you're trying to snap the thing. So many snap points going on, it can get complicated sometimes in here. The columns I ended up with were a combination of techniques that I had discovered in multiple different attempts. And so that's one of the reasons why I, I don't usually stop when I find one way of doing something. I like to continue to experiment. Okay, that's one way I could do this. What's another way? Are there other ways I could do this? Is there a more efficient way? Could I use other pieces? Could this be done in vanilla? How would this look with modded pieces instead? And just keep playing with it even after the problem is basically solved. Because more options is always a good thing in my mind. I like having more options to choose from, multiple different ways of doing the same thing. And then the height of these columns is what determined the height of the roof and the bal balcony level or terrace. I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but the roof level up there was determined by the height of the columns which I know will seem backwards to some people because some people would go, you know, well, the columns are decorative accent, right? You would add those at the end. But, well, that's what I get for learning how to build an arc uh, kind of on my own, figuring things out myself. I, I don't do things the same way as most people. And I decided that with the wider base, uh, I, I should only have two columns on either side instead of the three I had originally been planning. They would have been too close together with that wider base and crown. And I was trying to make the entry proportional with the size of the columns and vice versa. And so that's why I was building the entry first before I built the rest of the building or even planned out the layout of all of the different buildings. I had some idea uh, for where I wanted certain buildings to go, different foundations I had put down, like the big dome, the big building up on the very tippy top had a foundation up there. And I had the foundation for the disco room and the one for the land side entry area as well. But the rest of it, I had not planned out yet because I tend to take it one bit at a time and solve problems as they come up, I guess. And I don't start with a detailed plan in mind, just a general picture. And then I figure out the details as I go, because it would just be a little overwhelming for me to have to hold the, all those details, that detailed plan kind of in mind while I'm building. So that's just kind of how my brain works. And I think doing it this way also helps the structure to look kind of more organic because it all evolves sort of. It's not all pre-planned. Like at this stage of the build, I had no idea what the layout of the interior was going to be. I hadn't chosen even what material I was going to use for the floor of the main building. I didn't know where I was going to put the greenhouse. Hadn't planned out those details yet. I was just focusing on the one thing in front of me, which was the columns, since those were going to establish the look and kind of the, the feel of the entire structure. So I was able to just give my full attention to just that one detail before moving on and giving my full attention to a different detail. But I like the way it was looking so far. But I decided that these pillars needed to be spaced a little bit more wide apart because the base was wider than I'd originally been planning. So there was only gonna be two on each side with two foundations in between them. But I liked the proportions that I was seeing here. So I hopped on over to another map so that I could go through the steps of this and really make sure that I remembered it and that I had everything figured out clearly. So this is all vanilla pieces, vanilla everything. And it is surrounded by vanilla foundations, but that's actually a vanilla ceiling that I'm putting pieces on, a base game ceiling. This was an early attempt, but I didn't line up the fence foundations correctly. And so it's a little wonky. So I was trying it again here. The important thing is I found is to make sure that those uh, the 
fence foundations around the outer edge have to be on the middle snap point. There are three snap points there. There is one on the outer foundation or ceiling, one on the, the inner one, and then there's one in the middle. You have to make sure to get that middle one, otherwise things won't line up properly. And then you replace the ceiling with a hatch frame. And for some reason, I tried other hatch frame variants. It has to be a stone one, it seems like. It has to be a stone hatch frame with the reinforced trapdoor on it. And then you can snap the other fence foundations there and then get going with the pillars in this nice circular format here. And this was just a little bit of a quirk that I discovered with the vanilla that the fence foundations are not exactly the same height as each other. The, um, the X pieces are a little bit lower than the hashtag shaped uh, design. And, but it, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really make too much of a problem once you get going because of the fact that it's all symmetrical at least, that it's four at one height and four at the other height at the, same spacing it, it works still anyway so just working with that and then walls downward from the eight ceilings snapped to the eight pillars and then we add in the triangle roof pieces to fill in our nice fancy base here if you want a smaller base you can just do the single square base i i did an example of that over to the side there that also works just fine with vanilla And of course you can make this any size you like. You can make it as tall or as short as your build requires. Then to make the crown, we once again snap ceilings to each of those eight pillars, like so. And then use the triangle ceilings, I mean the triangle roofs, upside down. And this is harder to do, of course, if you're not in creative mode and can't fly, but it can be done with a tech suit or with a cyno, or if nothing else, you can build some scaffolding out of thatch if you have to. Definitely, I have done that a time or two, but I was in a hurry this day, so I just popped into creative mode so that I could fly and do it more easily that way. All right, and then since we don't have half walls in vanilla, in a base game arc building pieces. We're gonna use uh, regular walls up at the top here. Once again, you can see that slight difference in height, but it's not really a big deal. And just snap the ceilings to those. There we go. And there is one column finished with base game pieces. So that can be done on consoles or on PC. No matter how you play ARC, you should be able to do that. I have not tested it in mobile, but somebody who plays ARC mobile, give that a try and let me know if it works. I would be really appreciative if you could do that. And you can do this in whatever materials you like as well. Here's some examples. I also went through and made with Adobe pieces and one with tech pieces. I still did use down underneath. I still did use a stone hatch frame and trapdoor though and I did not use the adobe fence foundations because they're just a little bit wonky and strange to use. They're they're very tall for fence foundations but anyway you can see that it's it still looks good in other materials too. You could also mix and match materials to get whatever kind of look you would like. It would also be fun, I'm sure, to try painting these different colors. So which variant do you like the best? Do you like this octagonal base the best or do you like the square base the best? And which material do you think looks the best? If you make a build using these columns, please post it on Twitter and tag me or you can join my Discord. I've got a whole channel on there just for ARC screenshots and I would absolutely love to see your builds. If you have any other building questions, if there's any other parts of the uh, Mr. Miola mountaintop mansion that you're specifically wondering about, uh, pop them down in the comments below and let me know. I'm probably not going to have time to make videos about every single part of this build, so I definitely want to make sure to cover whatever you have specific questions about. 
I've got a big project in the works. So stay tuned for info on that. I'm also going to be streaming that content to channel members, which you can become a channel member for as little as $3 a month. And if you would like to see the previous video about the foundation layer, how I made the round foundations for the round buildings, make sure to watch this video here. And if you watched all the way to the end, please put a green heart emoji in the comments section below. Thanks so much, and I hope you have an absolutely fabulous rest of your day. Bye bye for now.